Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, I am here today. I am going to share with you how to make a picture of a sea turtle on the shore, kind of making its way to the ocean. And I'm going to show you a very quick um, example of what you can expect to do today. This is a picture of a sea turtle that was created with oil pastels, crayons, and paint. So there it is. So this is what we will be doing today. Now, because we used uh, oil pastel and crayon and paint on this picture, that doesn't mean we have to do that on the picture that we're doing today. And in fact, I'm going to use oil pastels completely and totally with my picture today. So you're free to do that, or you can use uh, crayons, you can use uh, colored pencils, markers, you can use paint, whatever you would like to do. But I do want you to keep in mind if you are using paint, uh, make sure that your paper is a little bit thicker than just, you know, normal computer paper, because, you know, as you know, with paint, if you're using water and paint, liquidy paint, um, that can make the paper kind of um, start to break apart if you're painting a lot of paint on it. So make sure you have a thicker paper if you're using paint. If not, if you're just using uh, crayons or markers, then any kind of paper will do. Now, this is the type of paper we normally use. This is um, a nine by 12 sheet of what I call sulfite or um, drawing paper. So that's, that's kind of our typical uh, paper that we use. And I'm just going to show you here what I've done. I have a nice big, I've got my nice big board here. And I use this because it's easier for me to, um, to show you to draw with this than on a smaller sheet. So, when you see this black outline, all that is, is I've taken my paper and I've traced it on here. You don't need to do that. You're just using your paper completely on its own. But when you see that black line, just imagine it's the outside um, edge of a piece of paper. So there's no need for you to, to draw an outline on your paper. This, just imagine, is my sheet of paper. So I can share it with you. I can show you. The other thing we will need to start is um, black marker. And I like to use the black Sharpie markers, um, especially if you're using paint, you want a permanent marker. Uh, I kind of use the black marker because, well, two reasons. I, I really like how it looks with uh, once color is added. But the other reason is you can see it. When I'm drawing on here, if I used a pencil, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm using the black marker uh, so you can see it. So I think most of you have uh, a black Sharpie marker or a black marker at home, and you can use one of those. So gather all those materials, basically a sheet of paper and a black Sharpie marker, and then we are going to start drawing our sea turtle. Now, I, I kind of like to draw borders on uh, my pictures. You don't need to. I kind of like doing it because it, it sort of makes an instant frame on the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can use a ruler or something uh, straight to do your border, but you don't need to. I'm just gonna do mine freehand. So expect it to be a little bit wobbly and that's okay if yours is, if it's kind of wobbly, that kind of adds to the interest of the picture. So here I go. Hopefully my marker is working because sometimes, yep, it's good. So I'm just going to do just a very small border. It doesn't have to be huge, just something to create kind of a frame. And again, remember this outside line is just the outside of the paper. So when you're looking at your paper, uh, you're just drawing one little border line. You can make it a little bit bigger than mine. And you've probably noticed so we've got kind of a borderline. You probably noticed the picture I shared with you, this one here, is quite a lot, it's quite a lot bigger than what we're working on. And you can certainly do that. If you've got a nice big sheet of paper, uh, this is I think 12 by 18 inches. If you've got that, you can use it. Uh, but most people have sort of the smaller pieces of paper. So that's why we're doing it small. So we have a piece of paper and we have a little border that might look a little wonky. And that's where we are at this point. And the next step is we want to find sort of the bottom area of the picture. We don't want to draw the turtle immediately right in the center. We want to have kind of a little bit lower 
So we're gonna draw them a little bit lower on the paper. So to do this, we kind of have to think ahead because a sea turtles have um, nice big flippers on their side. So when we draw our circle or it, it might be a bit of an oval, that's fine too. We wanna make sure that we leave enough space on either side of it so we can draw the flippers. So I'm just going to show you how my circle looks and then you can kind of um, draw yours sort of the same way on your piece of paper, leaving lots of room for those flippers. So I'm kind of looking near the bottom and I'm going to draw, it's more of an oval than a, than a perfect circle. And if you wanna trace something round, you can do that, but you certainly don't need to. Certainly, I don't think you would find a perfectly round sea turtle. So it's okay if it's a little bit um, misshapen. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a roundish shape. Kind of looks like an egg a little bit. Okay. So that's the first part of our sea turtle. The next step is we're going to draw some lines coming out of this round shape. And you might think of it almost like, you know, if you did a symbol for the sun, you draw a circle and then you're drawing lines kind of radiating out from that circle. That here, but we're not using a lot of lines. We're using, I don't know, maybe 12 or 14 lines. You don't have to count. It just you just don't want to do um, you know, like a hundred lines. You just want a few lines. So I'll show you here. So they're just little lines. They don't come out very far from that round shape. They just kind of come out a little ways. So I'm not even sure how many I've done here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, somewhere around 12 or 13, something like that. Looks a bit funny right now, doesn't it? It does. But what we'll do next, once you have all of those little lines, and I'll wait just a minute just to make sure that everybody has had a chance to uh, draw their little lines, is we're going to join them. It's kind of like a connect the dots or connect the lines. So a look here, drawing a line between the two and a line between the two. So I'm not going all the way around. I'm not trying to draw another uh, round shape, although you could do that, but you can kind of just go one at a time. See what I'm doing there? Okay, so I'm just kind of joining up the ends of all of those lines. Just like that until you get back to the beginning. Okay, so that's what you should have so far for your turtle. Okay. All right, so. Hopefully everybody is at that stage. And the next part, it's, it could be a little bit tricky, but it doesn't have to be. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Uh, this is just a way for us to create some texture on the back of the turtle. So what I like to do is I start near the top and along one side, I'm doing a zigzag without a lot of lines. So I'm kind of going, Zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag, sort of like that. Almost looks like a crack, right? Like if you had an egg and you had a crack in the egg. So the sort of tricky part comes when we want to repeat that line in mirror image. And what I mean by that is when we look at it, it's kind of the opposite. So here I've started coming in the zig this way. The other side, I'm going to do the zig that way. So I'll show you, and then you can give it a try, okay? So this zig goes up, so I'm gonna go zig. See what I mean? So this one is this way, the other one comes the opposite way. And now this one goes out that way, this one will now go out that way. See what I mean? So then we're going to go in, they're both going in, and then we're going out again, and in again, and then a little bit out again. Okay, so it's kind of um, a mirror image. It's, it's the opposite. Okay, 
I'll give you a little bit of a chance to do that because I know it might be a little bit tricky for some of you. And if you happen to make it so that the lines aren't exactly opposite, that's okay. Because, you know, we're drawing something from nature and uh, nature isn't always 100% perfect, right? So it's not like you're gonna find a sea turtle and if his zigs and zags are a little bit off that you're gonna say, well, there's something wrong with that. So don't worry too much about getting it exactly perfect. But once you have those zigs and zags, you can then start to take the outer points and bring them to the outer part of your circle. And you can also join up those lines in the middle. Okay, so then you're, you're starting to kind of see um, the shell of the, uh, the sea turtle coming together. Okay. okay, so hopefully everyone is at this point. Of course, you can always press pause and catch up and then you can uh, join me after because I'm gonna move on to the next step. And the next step is going to be the neck and the head of the sea turtle. So we're going to the top of the shell and just very simple, just gonna draw two short lines. So that will be the neck. I could go a little bit taller. You don't want to make it too tall. Okay. All right. And then uh, we can draw a little line and stop it. And on top of that, we're going to draw the head of the, uh, the sea turtle. So I'm just going to do sort of a, it's not a complete circle. It's got a bit of a sort of a point at the top. I'll just show you here. Okay, kind of like that for his head. And I'm just gonna put two in the lines. If any of you did the, uh, the Charlie Harper uh, birds exercise with me, um, you'll remember we used a lot of those little dots. We used those dots for eyes and for knees and all sorts of fun things on our birds. Okay, so We've got the beginning of um, the sea turtle and he has a head. He also needs to have a tail and the tail is at the bottom and it's just kind of a little curved line that meets up. Just a teeny weeny one. You can make yours a little bit bigger. I think mine's maybe a little bit small, but there is the tail, okay? And then we get to the part where we're drawing the flippers. So the flippers, are coming out on either side um, at the top and at the bottom because we've got the front and the rear flipper. So I'm just going to do a curved line that comes down, kind of wiggles like that. All right. And same thing on the other side. And if you've kind of found that you don't have a ton of room, that's okay. I mean, we're going to deal with it. It'll be just fine. So you'll just have to make the flipper as big as you can. And then the same thing on the bottom. They're a little bit different shape. You kind of come down a little bit. And you can kind of play around with it until you get something that looks kind of like this. So he is really starting to come together. All right, I'm just gonna wait a few seconds just so that everyone can get caught up. And we're, we're drawing this sea turtle, even though it's a sea turtle, we're drawing, um, we're drawing them on land because when sea turtles hatch, they uh, quickly, quickly, quickly make their way from the sand where they were born, they rush to the ocean. So we're kind of capturing um, that part of their life. And so what we'll do is we're just gonna do kind of a, a wavy line at the top of our picture. And that's basically gonna separate the bottom from the top or the sand from the ocean. So when you have completed um, the turtle, you can just do kind of a, you can just imagine this turtle is almost at the water. They're just about there and there is the, um, the water's edge. And if you want to, you can draw a second line. You know how at the beach, sometimes when the water comes up, there's a bit of kind of foam at the edge of the water. So you can kind of imagine that that's what that is. 
right? So now all of a sudden he's not just kind of floating in space or floating in the water. The, the sea turtle is kind of on the shore going towards the water. And I'm going to add some details to the turtle. I'm gonna draw some circles on his face, his head, I mean, and maybe some nice circles on the flippers just to add a little bit of interest. Okay, so you can see that sometimes little details can kind of make a big difference. And you know what, that little tail is kind of bugging me. So here I am, I have a picture I've drawn with a permanent marker, so I can't erase it, but I don't really like the tail. So I'm gonna show you something that you can do. If something doesn't work out, and you've drawn it with a permanent marker. One thing you could do is completely get rid of your picture, start all over again, but you don't need to. All you need to do is kind of look at it and say, well, how can I fix this? How can I change it? How can I make it more the way I want it to look? So I'm looking at this tiny little tail and I'm thinking, well, it's a little bit narrow. I'd like it to be wider. So all I'm going to do is draw another line. And now I've got a wider tail. And if I don't really like these lines, you know, there's some lines there and I'm kind of like, oh, I don't really like that. All I need to do is kind of camouflage that by drawing some other lines. See what I mean? So all of a sudden, we're not dealing with something that was, uh, that's a problem. We're dealing with something that we've made a creative solution for. And because I've drawn some little lines there, I might draw some on here on the neck, kind of connect it. So there's usually a way that you can get yourself um, out of a jam if you've, even when you're working with something like permanent marker. So same thing goes if you found that your, um, the flippers were a little bit small or they looked a bit weird, you can just add a couple more lines and add some patterns on there. And you might end up with something that actually looks better than what you thought it would look like in the very beginning. So you can always kind of play around with that. So. Here is our sea turtle on the sand. How can we show that they are on the sand at the beach? One way to do that is through color when we start adding color to the picture. But another way is just to add a couple of um, seashells to the beach. So I'm gonna keep them really, really simple here. I'm going to do kind of a, a spirally shell like that. That's just twist, twist and end, a little spirally shell. And I could do um, sort of more of a scallop shell. They're kind of brown on the top. Kind of looks like a mushroom. And then just some lines like that. All right. And I think I might put a little sea star somewhere here too. So just a little sea star. Okay, and then we kind of have all the things that we need um, to move on and start adding color to the sea turtle. So, and I said that I was going to use um, oil pastel, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab some of my colors and you can use crayons or markers, uh, colored pencils, paint, the sky is the limit. You could use a combination of uh, one or more of those materials and then you can have a nice mixed media piece too. So that's kind of a fun way to approach your pictures. You can also leave it black and white. If you really like the look of a black and white drawing, you can leave it like that. But I'm just gonna grab some of my oil pastels and I happen to have some colors here where I have different shades. So I'm, I'm going to color my sea turtle green. You don't need to do that. You can make your sea turtle any color you want, but I'm gonna stick with green. And I happen to have a few different shades. So I don't know if you can see here, but I've got like light green, dark green. I've got kind of this um, olivey green. So it's kind of neat if you're doing a color, you decide I'm gonna make this green or I'm gonna make this blue. It's kind of neat to take, to see if you can find different shades of that one color. So it's not just one straight color. That's what I'm doing here. And I might even add a little bit of, oh, let me see. If I had kind of a yellowy green, that would be sort of fun too. So it's kind of like a yellowy green. So 
I'm going to start to add some colors to uh, the sea turtle. So I'm going to start just on their back and just add some colors. I really like oil pastel because um, it's really bright and you can kind of blend it. Now, I don't have any with me here, but if you have any um, cotton swabs or Q-tips, they are fantastic when you're working uh, with oil pastels. So you can take and you can kind of blend your colors that way. So let's say I wanted to use not just this color, let's say I wanted some uh, darker green. I can do that and I could take a cotton swab and I could kind of blend those colors together. So I kind of like the look of this where uh, the center is a different color than the outside. So I'm gonna sort of continue with that. And just, right now I'm just sort of doing some outlines like that. Okay, and I'll continue that all around the shell. And I could even do that sort of on the, um, this outer part of the shell too, that we drew. So I'm drawing, coloring. And if you were using um, paint, one really neat way to use uh, paint with oil pastels is you could, uh, you could do the turtle with the oil pastels and then you could do your background with paint. So that's a really fun technique to try. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with my light green and do the centers. Something else you can use um, other than um, cotton swabs to um, blend your colors, you can also use tissue paper. So that's pretty fun too. Anything to save your fingers. But oil pastel is a bit tricky with fingers because our fingers have oil and the pastels have oil and it sometimes doesn't quite work. So if you have something like a cotton swab or paper, it works really, really nicely. So you can see here, instead of just going with one color green, by adding uh, a second color green, it kind of gives a little more depth to the picture. So that's sort of what the, uh, what the idea is. So I'm gonna go and another technique, I'll show you a different way. You can just go the whole area because these are a lot of tiny little spaces. You can just color the whole thing in one color and then go back over top. Again, that's the really cool thing about pastels. Now crayons do this too. Crayons work really, really nicely. Um, and they work very much the same way as oil pastels. So you can definitely use those instead. I'm a big fan of crayons, but we hadn't used oil pastels very much. So I thought we'd try them. So I'm just gonna go around the outside with a darker green. And then maybe along one side. So I'm kind of picking one edge. And I'm adding that darker green. And then you can kind of choose the colors that you want to do for the rest. I'm going to stick with my, um, my green theme for the sea turtle. So I'm going to make the, uh, the flippers a light green, and then I'm going to make the circles a darker green. Just coloring them all in. Do the same thing with the head. I'm just going to go lighter green with a darker green. And I could at this point, I could just color the whole thing. I could color right over top of the circles and then go uh, over with the darker. But I'm just showing you this way, just in case you're using um, a darker color for the flippers and a lighter color for the circles it's kind of hard to layer the lighter colors on top of the darker ones. So it's okay to do the opposite, go light first and then layer the dark, but it's not so simple to do it the other way around unless you've got a nice um, thick paint that you're using. So as a rule, it's good to kind of leave those areas unless you knew ahead of time you were gonna go darker. And I just want you to see here, I'm not being completely 
perfect with my lines. Like I'm not worrying too much if I go outside the lines. And I've always kind of, um, I've never really liked that whole thing about having to stick inside the lines. I think our, our art is so much more interesting when um, you kind of bust away from that and you get outside the lines a little bit. Makes it more uh, expressive and interesting. So never worry about having to stay inside the lines. So there you can see I'm just adding the darker. And I'm gonna jump ahead to the sand. And I have some different colors here that I could use for sand. I've got sort of a sand color, it's like an ochre color. But I kind of like the idea of, you know, having it more colorful than that. You could use ochre, you could use a sand color, but I'm actually going to use pink for my sand, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And this is a big area to cover. So if you have paint and if you've used a thicker piece of paper, you could certainly come in and use paint to fill in this area. You probably get it done a little bit quicker, but I mean, we're not in a race here, so there's no uh, problem if it takes you a little bit more time. So just going to add some pink. And if you find that your color is a little bit dark, that you, you know, you went there and you said, oh, it's a little too much. I didn't want to go that dark. All you need to do is take a white and you can kind of go over top of it and you can soften that color a bit. I don't know if you can see that. You can see how that, that white kind of softens the color. It also blends it a little bit too. So it takes away those paper area marks. It just makes it just a little bit softer looking. See? So that's a really fun technique. And that's part of why I really like um, oil pastels. And crayons do this too, just to a lesser extent. So I'm filling in my space. You don't need to work as quickly as I am. I've decided I like this tail better now than when I first drew it. I like those little areas on there, almost like little scales. Filling in that area. And again, I'm gonna go over it with the white pastel. You can see the difference really well there. So this pink is um, darker than this one, right? Because we've added white to this one. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm not being careful, being a little bit messy. That actually makes it look more like a painting than a drawing too. It's a little bit messy like that. Okay, so you can continue on. I'm only doing half here just to show you, but I wanna make sure you, you see that you fill in the whole area. That whole space, all of this stuff will get filled in with some kind of a color, whatever color you choose for your sand. And sometimes sand is pink. Sand is basically um, ground up seashells. So it really depends on what seashells that have, have happened on that beach. The telephone kind of distracted me. Okay, right, so here, I'm coloring over that again, because I really like how that looks, that softer color. Okay, and I'm gonna jump ahead to the, uh, the water. And because we've done um, this little line, that's kind of like the, uh, the sea foam, right? And sometimes it's pure white, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different shades of blue going to use a darker blue uh, for the water. And then I'm just gonna use a lighter blue for that line um, that we drew, sort of to distinguish between the ocean and the sand.
Okay. And then my darker blue will go up here. So we're getting a very colorful picture with our sea turtle. And I might just lay this down so that I can color this in it. And I should have mentioned too, if you make, um, if you want to, you could make um, smaller circles or smaller ovals and you could put all kinds of sea turtles. You could make a whole bunch of little baby sea turtles on the beach. So you don't necessarily have to do one large one, but now that you know how to draw them, you could do a picture where you've got more than one. And that could be kind of fun. So I'm going to show you again here, I've got really dark, but you can see I haven't really filled in all of the gaps. But one way to do that is the same thing we did on the sand. Take a white uh, oil pastel and go over top. And I'm going to show you what happens here. And again, the white makes it lighter, but it also kind of spreads it out. It sort of blends it. So here is, I'll show you the before and the after. I've got the half and half. So half of it is without the white and the other half is width. So you see the difference there. So it really starts to look a little bit like a painted picture. Okay, so I've got that. And then I'm almost done. So I'd really like to get that um, sand finished. So I'm putting this down to do that. And of course, if you were doing a larger piece then it would take you a little bit longer to do. We're almost there. And you'll have to decide on the colors for your seashells as well. Because I've used pink for my sand, that kind of means that I can't really use pink for my seashells. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't show up as nicely. So I might choose uh, maybe orange and yellow for the seashells. So I'm just colored the background pink and I'm just going over it with that white pastel again. And I will show you how that looks. Okay, so now we've got this pink beach with our sea turtle and I'm just going to take care of the legs or the flippers I should say, the rear flippers. Same way I did before with the light green and then the dark green dots. But you know, I mean, it's your sea turtle. So if you want to make your sea turtle purple or orange or red, doesn't matter. You can do whatever color you like. And if you've already chosen green, you can always do another one. You can pick another color for your second sea turtle. So I've got one more section to do. I'm going to do the neck and the tail I've done also. So here, and then I just have those uh, seashells to do. So I'm going to choose orange just to make it stand out a little bit. And then I think I will choose some yellow. For my scallop shell that looks a little bit like a mushroom. I think I'll go orange also for my sea star. And the last thing to do would be to color in your border. If you'd like to, you can leave it white or you can color it. So I'm kind of looking at my colors and thinking uh, I'd like something a little bit different. I wanna use a color that I haven't used before. So I, and I'm actually thinking I might use, I might use black. I kind of like the look of black. Black can be tricky. If you start using too much black, you can kind of get carried away and you can end up with um, a lot of black on your picture. So be very, very careful when you're using black, but I will use black for my border because I kind of like, it's kind of like the Sharpie, like I like that contrast. I'm just gonna lay this down and I'll do black, but you know, red would look nice, purple would be beautiful. 
some orange or yellow would be really lovely because we've only used a little bit of that on our pictures. So we could do some of that. If we used pink, it would be kind of hard to tell the difference between the frame and the sand. So I'm not using pink. I'm almost done. I'm almost ready to show you the completed picture. And here it is. So there is my sea turtle. And I hope you have had fun making yours. If you're still working, that's absolutely fine. You keep working. And uh, if you aren't sure how this worked and you wanna try again, you wanna make more, all you have to do is go back to the beginning of the video and watch it all over again. And then you can make a sea turtle for yourself and for your friends and your family. All right, so I hope you had a good time. I really hope you send me uh, pictures of what you did because I love seeing everything that you make and I will see you next time. So bye for now.